hell are you? We are Venom. Venom The Last Dance is the next big thing in Sony's Spider-Man universe, and guess what? There's some juicy news that's adding even more drama to the mix. Remember Tom Hardy? He kicked off the SSU playing Eddie Brock back in 2018 with the first Venom flick. Now he's the only SSU star to swing into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, making cameos in the post credit scenes of Venom Let There Be Carnage and Spider-Man No Way Home. Too bad he never got to bump into Tom Holland's Spider-Man like we all hoped. But hold on to your hats, because Hardy's back as Eddie Brock in Venom The Last Dance. It's the first SSU movie hitting the screens after the dumpster fire that was Madam Web. Even though Madam Web had a stellar cast and loads of Spider-Man related characters, it tanked big time, leaving fans scratching their heads about the future of the franchise. Now all eyes are on Venom The Last Dance to pick up the pieces. But guess what? There's a twist in the plot that could shake things up for Sony's Spider-Man universe. With the looks of it, Tom Hardy might be hanging up his symbiote suit for good after Venom The Last Dance. The title pretty much hinted at it, but now we've got solid confirmation that Hardy's last hurrah as Eddie Brock in the SSU is happening. Straight from the horse's mouth, Sony Motion Pictures Group chairman Tom Rothman spilled the beans, calling it the third and last Venom, and hinting it's going to be massive. Talk about adding some serious weight to the movie's shoulders. But hey, there's hope yet for the SSU. Rothman's also hyping up how Hardy's Eddie Brock is going out with a bang in his final flick. And let's be real, with the way Venom's been slinging symbiotes left and right in his past two solo outings, we're betting another symbiote showdown is in the cards. Maybe even bring in Null, the big bad symbiote god, for Venom to tango with before Hardy takes his final bow. Venom is the only successful franchise in Sony's Spider-Man universe. The news of Venom The Last Dance wrapping up Hardy's stint in the SSU is a bit of a downer for the shared universe. Despite a few swings and misses, Venom has been the shining star in Sony's Spider-Man universe. Just look at the numbers from Box Office Mojo. The first Venom in 2018 webbed up a staggering $856 million worldwide. Even though the sequel, Venom Let There Be Carnage, didn't quite match up, pulling in $506.8 million globally in 2021, it still flexed some serious muscle, especially considering the pandemic mess. It goes to show the Venom brand still packs a venomous punch at the box office. When you compare the SSU's track record to the Venom juggernaut, it's like night and day. Take Morbius, for example. Despite all the buzz and viral memes, the 2022 flick starring Jared Leto took a nosedive at the box office. Not once, but twice. Sony even tried to ride the meme wave with a re-release, but it still couldn't lift off, only raking in $167.4 million. And then there's Madam Web, which barely scraped by with a measly $100.2 million this year, signaling a real rough patch for the SSU. Now, all eyes are on Craven the Hunter, set to hit screens in December. It's the SSU's first crack at an R-rated flick and hopes to inject some much-needed adrenaline into the franchise. But for now, it's clear as day, the Venom movies are the SSU's golden ticket to success. So how can the SSU pivot after Venom The Last Dance? With Hardy's Venom saga wrapping up, the SSU is facing a major turning point. If Sony wants to keep the universe alive and kicking, they've got to shake things up big time. And what better way to do that than finally bringing Spidey into the mix? I mean seriously, having a whole universe centered around Spider-Man without actually having Spider-Man? It's like having a pizza without cheese, just not right. Fans have been chanting for a Spidey appearance since day one, and now's the perfect time to make it happen. Sony could go all out and cast a fresh face as Peter Parker, or they could swing in one of the three movie Spider-Men we've seen before. Heck, they could even introduce Miles Morales into the live-action realm for the first time ever. And it's not just about the big screen. Sony's got plans for Spidey-related TV shows too, starring with Noir, starring none other than Nicolas Cage. After Venom The Last Dance wraps up, the only successful franchise in the SSU, shifting gears to the small screen could be just what the doctor ordered. Expanding with a bunch of series could give the universe a whole new lease on life, keeping things fresh and exciting for fans everywhere. When it comes to Venom 3, nailing the villain or villains is absolutely crucial. Luckily, Sony's Spider-Man universe is sitting on a goldmine of Marvel characters, with a whole bunch of heroes and villains straight out of Spidey's comics. 
and since Venom's been carving out his own corner of the universe, he's got a bunch of baddies to choose from for his next showdown. With such a massive catalog to pick from, Venom 3 has endless possibilities. Some villains might have a leg up over others when it comes to fitting into Sony's Venom franchise, but hey, that just adds to the excitement, right? First on the list is Demogoblin. Demogoblin sure brings a darker vibe to the table compared to your usual Spider-Man villains. He's like the black sheep of the bunch, but in a good way. While he might not fit the colorful world of Peter Parker's MCU adventures, he's practically tailor-made for Venom's gritty universe. Picture this, a demonic twist on the Green Goblin, born from the unholy union of a demon and the Hobgoblin. Talk about a recipe for chaos. Plus, since Demogoblin has tangled with Venom before, bringing him into Venom 3 would not only up the ante, but also deepen the ties between the franchise and Spider-Man. Another character is Orwell Taylor. Now, here's a little nugget of info that might just blow your mind. The rumored working title for Venom 3 was Orwell, and if that doesn't scream intrigue, I don't know what does. But here's where it gets really interesting. Orwell Taylor isn't just some random name plucked out of thin air. He's a minor Marvel Comics villain with a bone to pick with Venom himself. Orwell Taylor, a tough-as-nails military general whose son was taken out by Venom, is hell-bent on vengeance. Consumed by the need for payback, he'd stop at nothing to make Eddie pay for his crimes. And considering the body count Venom's racked up in the movies, it's not hard to see why Orwell might lead a relentless manhunt against Eddie in Venom 3. Lastly, we have Sin Eater. Now he's a blast from the past in Marvel Comics. This shady character has deep ties to Venom's origin story, adding some serious spice to the mix. Back in the 1980s, Sin Eater started off as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent gone rogue, turning into a notorious serial killer. But here's the kicker, he's the one who lit the fire under Venom's burning hatred for Spider-Man. You see, Eddie Brock's journalism career hit the skids when he started digging into the Sin Eater case. He ended up writing some seriously off-base articles about the guy's identity, only for Spider-Man to swoop in and reveal the truth. Talk about a journalist's nightmare. So if Sony decides to pit Spidey against Venom in Venom 3, fingers crossed, it wouldn't be a shocker to see Sin Eater thrown into the mix. After all, having him stir up trouble could be just the thing to fuel Eddie's grudge against the web-slinger. Well, that's it for today. What are your thoughts on the potential villains for Venom 3? Which one are you most excited to see go head-to-head -head with Eddie Brock? Drop your comments below, and don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more updates. Until next time, stay symbiotic and keep swinging. Thanks for watching the video, and we'll catch you in the next one. You